Hey y'all, I'm Tim. Welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. Good morning everybody, I'm Matt. Today we've got another guided tour through one of our greenhouses. You guys seem to be enjoying these. So today we're back in house 17. We're gonna walk through and kind of just randomly pick up some different Japanese maples, give you an idea of some size expectancies, show you a few things we're working on here at Maple, Mr. Maple. Maybe some things to come, maybe some things that'll be ready, maybe some things that'll be here uh, if, you, if you're visiting Mr. Maple during one of our open houses. So uh, we want to show you a little bit of this and hopefully this will get you excited about some of the things we're growing here at Mr. Maple. Like, subscribe, and share, and sign up for our weekly emails on Mr. Maple. Some of these plants we're talking about will be coming to a tenant 10 near you. So if you're signed up for that email list, you'll find out about these cool plants coming out at Mr. Maple. So let's start out with a very unique one here, Tim. Uh, let's talk to him about Acer Palmatum Horizontalis. This is one I, I don't know many other people who have this in the United States. I know this uh, plant is real popular in Australia. Yeah. And uh, this is a weeping style that has a very horizontal and contorting habit mm -hmm. that's really unique and different. It's almost like a in that Giro Shidari range, but yeah. a little more serrated leaf. It's very fast growing in its width as well. Like horizontalis is a good description of this because if you don't stake this, it's going to put on extreme width. Yeah. Like it tends to grow very quickly and very wide in a very low manner. Um, think of it like a more serrated leaf Ryusin style. Uh, great grower, very heat tolerant. Again, a selection from Australia. We found this to be exceptionally durable. Uh, just a great grower all around though. This is one that's going to give you a similar aesthetic to Ryusin, but uh, maybe even a little bit more width to it a little faster. Yeah, definitely something very unique. I don't think we've offered this yet on Mr. Maple, so we'll have to build a page for it so you can sign <laughs> up for it. But amazing plant that is really unique and different. And that one that you know we love those weeping styles. Check out our Pendulous Treasures collection. Uh, this is one that's not one that we introduced, but it may be something that falls in there because no one else has it. Yeah, United I don't States. think this one's made it out there much. I think it will be unique and a uh, really good leaf shape to it too. I mean, it's a little bit more serrated on each leaf. It distinctly stands apart from Ryusin, but some of those similar type qualities. And uh, I think it's gonna be a fun one. I think people are gonna enjoy this one as it gets out there in the trade. I, I think that's for sure. Now, next up, We've got a selection by our friend Crispy and Silva. I mean, uh, Sir Damon, this one during the winter months has some of the brightest red bark, like that, that yeah, yeah. how do you describe that? Like a hot pink red almost mm -hmm. bark of any of the Japanese maples. Yeah, we're actually here in early September, so it's the least eventful time for the color. So when you're watching this, they'll actually be more colorful. Sir Damon is popular for being one of the brightest red barks in the winter months possible. This one has an intense, intense, like Tim said, almost pink red bark to it. It gives it one of the brighter barks in the whole maple world and some great sizes on these you can see right now too. We haven't potted many of these up to threes right now. Uh, we're heavy on space. We've got a lot of product, so it's a great time to pick up plants because they're gigantic sizes. And Sir Damon is a cool plant that if you give it some sunlight, that also picks up the bark color on this one. And it's just one that is very unique and different because the bark really stands out from your Sengukaku and Benikawas. And so if you're looking for something with a little more intensity, mm -hmm. this is definitely a great option for that coral bark that'll give you some good winter interest. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, let's move along. I think you had another one you wanted to mention right over here you'd said. Oh yeah, yeah, Benigawa. Benigawa, now this is a beautiful red selection. Uh, Benigawa has one of those more heavily styled Matsumuri leaves as well. Now I like Benigawa because it's giving you some good red color in the spring, some bronze color during the summer. It's got some nice green uh, bark to it. It can really give you some nice yellows and oranges in the fall mm -hmm. uh, before it goes to a red. Uh, it's definitely a more unique red upright that's not offered yeah. uh, that often in the nursery trade, mm -hmm. but is one that is very unique and different, being that heavy Matsumuri style with that bronze color in the leaf. I would say with this one, my favorite part about it is the fall color. I've seen the fall color rival Acer Japonicums for that reds and yellows and oranges like you're saying yeah it's it's been an exquisite one i've saw it, you know just in perfect fall color before and uh some great size on these i don't think these are currently listed either it's probably a soon to come one right very soon to 10 at 10 make sure you're signed up awesome plant something that's very unique and is very different from a lot of the things we offer at mr maple and at mr maple we do a thousand varieties of japanese maples and so we actually do a lot more than that and our goal is to always make as many of these selections available as, mi as many as possible. Mm -hmm. And so you can actually get them. I mean, that's our goal. So when you see things sell out really quickly, we've had a huge set most of the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just got to act quickly because they sell out really quick <laughs> on the website. 
Let's uh, let's grab some of these Red Dawns up here. Let's keep moving on up. I'd like to talk about that one a little bit. This is one of my favorite uh, Acer Shirosawinums. It's an Acer Shirosawinum X Palmatum likely. Red Dawn is a beautiful plant. If you don't know why we love this one, definitely watch our video on Red Dawn. It has premium fall color to it. Fall's coming. You know, it's September now, but we're going to be in those fall colors. I was telling Tim, you know, we're five weeks out of some cooler weather, so... Hang on there, gardeners. Some really cool weather's coming. Uh, one neat thing about our website, too, if you don't know this, you can always hold for fall shipping. So there's a place that says notes for seller, and you can add, I would like for this order to ship in October. We're more than glad to do that. Just put that in. It's the first page when you add a tree to cart at checkout. It'll say notes for seller. Simply put, hey, guys, I'd like this shipped first week in October on there. Or you can also call Jody, and she can add that note to your order if it hasn't already shipped. So Acer Shirosawinum Red Dawn, like Matt talked about, it's one of his favorites. He's got it in your garden yeah, yeah. at your house. And uh, go check out our video, full video on Red Dawn. We've got a video of it in fall color. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got an electric, electric bright really red fall color. Really premium fall color. Great spring color, too. Can get a little green right now this time of year, right before that fall color. We're actually at our greenest stage of the, the year where we're storing chlorophyll right before that fall color change. But awesome tree. I like that Acer Shirosawinum influence on it. Gives it a little bit more rounded of a leaf. Kind of gives it a little bit more cartoonish look to it. Yeah, and a lot of people, you can, this is one that you can really see that Shirasanum influence mm -hmm. because the leaf shape is unlike anything else. Uh, when you see it, you know it's a red dawn because the leaf really stands out. But the other thing about red hybrid Shirasanums is they do really well in zone 5A a lot of times mm -hmm. where a lot of people may struggle, where you may start to get a little bit of uh, pushing zones into 4B, the red Shirosawinums can actually push a little bit further mm -hmm. than your typical palmatum. And so it's a great plant that a lot of people in those colder zones really mm -hmm. love when you get that full moon influence, that Acer Shirosawinum, because it can really push it to, to deeper zones. Uh, you know, it's not the same as a Sebaldianum or mm -hmm. a... But it Sousa protects you in those occasional, in those those occasional, occasional dips. water dips. Yeah. And a lot of people who've had these and went through crazy weather cycles, really love those hybrid Shirosawinums for what they can do and give oh, you that red sure. color. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. Great plant, can't say enough about this one. Definitely check out our video on Acer Shirosawinum Red Dawn. I think it's one that's probably underrated. I'm stepping back. I, uh, I've got to set those forward and back. So, Strawberry Spring. Beautiful reticulated form. This one's in our New Ghost category. Uh, definitely check out our video on New Ghost. Strawberry Spring is a Talon Buckholtz introduction. I remembered when Talon was telling me about this on the phone, he was like, Hey Tim, I've got this strawberry pink that's just got some amazing, amazing spring color. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up getting one from him. Yeah, I think and it was, arrived in the mail as a gift. We're yeah. pretty excited about that. Uh, we, we freaked out about it because the colors on it were unreal. And it is one of the most strawberry pink mm -hmm. of almost any of the Japanese maples. Yeah. Now, again, we keep white poly on year round here at our nursery. So we do tend to green things up, but we're watering you know, hundreds of thousands of plants <laughs> rather than just one or two. So we do have that on for water retention as well and, and kind of control the environment. So we do tend to green them up a little bit. This will be their greenest stage, but this one is a showstopper for the colors. I I can't get enough of this one in the early spring. I know Brian can't either. Some of the photography he's been getting on this one is phenomenal. So these are our current sizes of 20, in 2022 of Strawberry Spring. If you see this sold out right now, make sure to sign up to be notified when this thing becomes available again because this is a plant that is one of my favorite mm. reticulated types, especially one of my favorites of those new ghosts. Yeah, always popular. And if you notice it's not in stock, you can always get notified when it's back in stock, but we do have some awesome sizes right now. That's for sure. We've got so many cool plants in this house. I mean, we're walking by tons of plants from Jubilee to Waveleaf to Twombly's Red Sentinel. Let's I mean, talk about it every time, but let's grab one of these Geisha Gone Wilds and show them the size on this. I mean. Excellent sizes on Geisha Gone Wild right now. We talk about this one a lot at our nursery, but I love Geisha Gone Wild. Another Talon Buckholtz introduction. You know, very, very similar to Shiraz. You probably saw our video talking about Shiraz and Geisha Gone Wild. Awesome bright pink on neon red in the early spring. My wife loves this plant. That's why whenever, we're, if you watch the full video, she is actually the one who does the intro for this one because she's like, if I'm going to do one, can I do Geisha Gone Wild? Because it really has that electric pink color that stands out in the springtime. And it's something I love. Yeah. And it's, it just stands out in the crowd and gives it something a little bit unique and something pretty different. I know we talk about that one a lot, but awesome plant. Hey, let's give a preview of this one over here. 
uh, Kennendale Sunrise. So this is another introduction by our friends at Metro Maples. This is an introduction by Scott Hubble. Uh, I'm a big fan of this one. He has Kennendale Sunset, but also Kennendale Sunrise. This is another dwarf with very dense foliage to it. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Hub's Dwarf with some of the foliage to it, how dense it gets, but just a very unique uh, outside the box plant. It's very unique looking for sure. Yeah, it's a dwarf that you don't find, you won't find new in the, you won't find much in the nursery tray because it's new. Yeah. And uh, we do a lot of trading with Scott and get a lot of their cool introductions coming out at Metro. Yeah, shout between, out to Scott Hubble, good friend of ours. And shout out to Keith Johansson too, <laughs> who uh, started Metro Maples. If Keith they, is watching Italy. We need to go visit Keith. How about we go, how about we fly to Italy and do an on site video with Keith on Acer Truncatums in Italy? <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty sweet. But uh, amazing plant, and uh, they really grow a lot of heat tolerant plants, and that was one that did well for them down there in Texas. Mm -hmm. Ah, winter orange. I mean, you can't not love winter orange because this plant is amazing. During the winter, this plant just gives you just orange winter bark that just stands out. It truly is a pure orange in the winter. I don't not like it. <laughs> winter orange is awesome. This was one that got into the nursery trade through our friend Carl Munn. He actually got it from a nursery in Canada. Uh, it's it's super rare. Uh, it makes a perfect accompaniment. Check out our coral bark videos. We did a whole video on that too, winter interest plants. But winter orange gives you something outside the box to pair with your Sir Damon, something different you can pair with your Sangukaku and Bihu. It's a distinctly orange form of coral bark. I think you're going to love it, in your, especially in your winter garden. And we rate these to zone six just because it's a coral bark selection. But the rumor is this came from a 4B, which yeah. just blows my mind if there's Japanese maples in 4B and mm -hmm. coral bark selections in 4B. Yeah. I mean, we haven't tried it. It, in it that. may push zones there a little bit, but yeah. we, you know, being on the safe side, we do rate that one a six. Uh, it, it definitely came from Canada. That, that, that we know. Um, very, very durable plant. Has a little bit of splashing of kind of orange new growth over it in the early spring, too, when it's first leafing out. But you're going to want this one to pair with your other coral barks. If you're going to put this out with a Benikawa or a Sir Damon and a Bihu, you're going to love the match that makes. That makes a perfect trio. Any red coral bark, a winter orange, and a Bihu, whoa. The bark is just going to sh shock and all. Have you paired that with an Aoyagi and mm -hmm. you've got a, what, what do you call four, a quad factor? <laughs> yes, I guess. Now, we're again, we're shooting this in September, so they're at their greenest stage for the bark. As we get into those winter months, we may we may focus on a few of our coral barks again. This one has intense orange bark in the winter. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing plant. There's so many cool plants in here when we're just walking around looking. Uh, you know, I know you mentioned it, bro. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this plant. We might do a video on this, full video on this later. Yeah, this was an Ed Shin introduction, Blushing Beauty. So Acer Japonicum, Blushing Beauty. Uh, this one leaves out in the early spring exactly how it's described. It is green, but it has a blushing of red over top of it. I love that way to describe that kind of translucent sheen you get over some plants. I think it's a really good way to describe it as a blushing. And it'll be a green tree, but it'll have that blushing of color over top of it. But it has a really large leaf to it too. And so this is a plant that just gives something extra with some really nice spring color, some nice summer interest. And it's a plant that is really unique and really different. And it's a plant that the name is, just fits it perfectly. I mean, you I, I can hear people calling this Jody right now since you brought this one up. <laughs> When's it gonna be available? <laughs> we will be doing a lot of Blushing Beauty. It may be next spring, but it may be sooner. We'll see. We're, we're still debating our numbers on this one, but we may be dropping some Blushing Beauty. We definitely have it in the pipeline though. So something from the Area 51. We're, we're Great sure red fall colors too. I mean, it's a really nice bold red in the fall. It's that spring where it really stands out. I think this one makes a fun pairing. If you're gonna get an orange fan, Talon Buckholz introduction, you can have, I have a garden where I have orange fan planted right next to one of my stock plant Blush and Beauties. So you've got the orange hues and the red hues right there together. And just something unique and outside the box for an I, I love the full moon Japanese maples. Yeah. And I know y'all do too. You always talk about them every 10 at 10. People are like, when are you going to be listing uh, some Japonicums? We list a lot of Japonicums <laughs> uh -oh. on the 10 at 10. This might not be that soon though. We'll see. We'll do our best. We're trying to get everything in numbers. That's our goal, like I mentioned earlier, is to always put as many different things on the website as we can. Uh, I feel like this is turning into a, a video on a lot of coral bark selections. Acer Palmatum Wildfire. You know, great plant. Uh, this one, I love this uh, for its, its interest. This one basically, Wildfire aptly describes it because the most yellow at the base 
kind of orange as you get up it and then red tips to it so it kind of gets brighter as you go up the tree um, i found it to be exceptionally durable um, it's been a great plant for us zone six through nine and very very heat tolerant i found this one to be exceptionally heat tolerant as well so far and the fall colors on this are exceptional with yellows oranges and reds and this is a plant that gives you winter interest great fall color and a nice summer feel during the summer. So we've done a whole coral bark video now. We'll have to do the exact same video again, except <laughs> in like four months when everybody wants to see coral barks. I guess we're in the right house for it though. Next up, we've got Zhizhou. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we got chicken feet. <laughs> and this is a yellow bark selection from China. Uh, kind of yellowy orange too. You can get some orange in there as well. The spring color can get a little bronzing, yeah. a little bit of pink, the bronzing on, on the new growth, on the leaves, but the bark itself will be a yellow to orange on the tips during the winter months. All right, everybody's like, hey guys, do this same video, but like January 1st. <laughs> so awesome looking plant, uh, great fall color like Tim was saying. Uh, one thing I love highlighting right now is the sizes. We've got some excellent sizes for you in this. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be anything to get a Zhizhou like this and into a three gallon. In fact, I think that's kind of the size most people expect in the trade in a three gallon. So some excellent sizes on these right now. Don't sleep on them. Uh, great sizes right now and there's so many cool plants around here i mean every corner we talk we walk around there's something else that's just awesome from peavy starfish yeah yeah i mean a lot of flat growth on that right now it won't revert though check out our video about late summer growth and what's going on there we've got tons of sangukaku some really good sizes on the coral barks mm -hmm. there's great sizes in here of some low grafted knob shidaris uh, check out our video on heat tolerant Japanese maples. I think that's in part two, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It, we've got amazing plants all in these greenhouses. And uh, I think we could go back through. Oh, uh, we could walk by a million things. I oh, mean, yeah. Granted, when you're in one of these houses, there's about 5,000 plants in one of these houses this size. And anytime we're in one of these houses, depending on the set size, there's typically several hundred cultivars within the house. Yeah, I, uh, at least 200. I'd say about 200 uh, at least. Sometimes, you know, it depends if there's a huge set of something in there, but typically about 200 different varieties in a house. So uh, we're just highlighting a few of our, our highlights here. We hope you're enjoying this kind of content where we do walkthroughs. Uh, we've done house 16 and 18, so now we've hit 17. A lot of our lower number houses are getting potted up right now in liners. Maybe we'll talk about those too soon. We hope you're enjoying this kind of content where we're going around, showing you around Mr. Maple, especially for those of you who don't get to come here in person. We hope this gives you a little bit of a look at our nursery and kind of a size expectancy of what you can guess to have here at Mr. Maple. Again, these sizes are indicative of what we have right now in fall 2022. We're shooting this in September, so it kind of gives you an idea of what we have around that time frame. If you're watching a year from now, they could be slightly larger or slightly smaller. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. We try to hit some different things that we wanted to highlight, some different plants that we've got bigger sets of, and some good sizes in. So, uh, also a few of those cool plants we hadn't released yet, like the Kennedale Sunrise, and Blush, and Beauty, Blush and Beauty, the Horizontalis, Benny a couple of highlights there for you, mixed in amongst the Coral Bark video. <laughs> hey, take care, God bless, and have a great day.